Hey guys, Bound to Tell here. I actually got two things I want to talk about today. I want to talk about uh, Rachel Maddow uh, at first. Uh, she happens to be my favorite uh, news anchor on uh, cable news uh, because she's the only one that I think conducts herself consistently, at least, uh, in a logical and reasonable manner. Now, obviously, she isn't perfect because, well, no one is, and especially news anchors, uh, especially on cable news. Uh, so she's not perfect by any means, but I do view her as the as the best available at least. And I think all one has to do is watch it, can watch her show consistently to see that, because she treats people with respect even when she disagrees with them, and she will try and use facts rather than just start insulting or trying just to merely talk over other people. Uh, usually, of course. Um, but recently she made a mistake. Uh, she had a story about the uh, birthers, and she used a clip from uh, the Rush Limbaugh's uh, talk show on the radio, and uh, attributed it to being like played last Wednesday, when it was actually played last Wednesday a year ago. Uh, trying to say that, you know, even though Obama has released multiple forms of his birth certificate, uh, that there are people who are still using racist charged language uh, to incite and further uh, promote this idea that Obama is not a natural born citizen of the country. Uh, and so she, when pointed out the mistake, she came out and said, literally, you know, uh, I was wrong, I lose. You know, and she mentioned, you know, her and Rush Limbaugh being in a brawl right now, metaphorically, of course, or something like that. Uh, and all that kind of kind of stuff, but uh, I'm trying to think where I was going with that, and I, I apologize for this. Again, I'm still trying to work on the unscripted videos. Uh, but the, but the, the, the overall point of it is she came out and said that uh, her source for that information was simply wrong. They had used uh, this source from a World Net Daily article, uh, which they have since taken down, or something like that. The link no longer works. Um, but they had screen captures of it and put that on the screen and everything. Uh, but nonetheless, her sources were wrong whether or not WorldNet Daily got it wrong. And she apologized for getting it wrong and that she should have checked it regardless of where her source came from. Uh, where this information came from, rather. Um, and she legitimately apologized, which is one of the things that I, I, I really... That really speaks to me about her character and her quality as a news anchor is because in the, in, in the mainstream media these days, it's not, I apologize or I'm legitimately sorry for this. It's, I'm sorry if I offended anybody. It, the, the apologies tend to be conditional. There's always an if statement added to them as if the act of doing whatever was wrong wasn't wrong. It's only wrong if, you know, I offended somebody. Un, it's... It, it, it's, that in itself is offensive because it, it offends our sense of civility and whatnot. Not that offensive is being bad, but it just causes more problems to, to make your apology conditional upon people's reaction to what you did. It's not their reaction that was wrong, and it's not their reaction that you have to apologize for. It's your own fuck-ups that you have to apologize for, and that's what Rachel Maddow did. And she came out and directly stated it. And then she went and actually found clips played from the last week. <coughs> I have a bit of a cough, so I'm... I'll probably end up actually... <coughs> Yeah, I'm editing it out. So she went and played clips from the show that legitimately happened within the last week. Uh, full of racistly charged language that he's using in support of uh, promoting the birther ideology and in just general, just using racist things in general. Like he just makes the sort of random comparison to, I think, Zimbabwe or something like that, an African country with a black leader. Uh, and he's like, oh, well, he took all the white people's homes. And then suddenly that somehow means that Obama's going to do the same thing. Because, I mean, that, that was literally the comparison he made. And it reminded me a lot of this friend I used to have who I, I, I had a video, my YouTube and, uh, or one of my personal YouTube account and my Facebook are connected. So if I like or favorite a video, it'll post up on my Facebook and this is just to spread it a hell of a lot easier, obviously. I mean, you guys know the purposes of this all. But, uh, 
Man, my friend looked at the Young Turks and started criticizing them because Turk was in their name. So she started criticizing Cenk Uygur and Anna Kasparian and the other members of the, of the TYT Nation and the network and all that kind of stuff for the, for the uh, crimes or misgivings or whatever problem she had with the actual Turkish government. It doesn't make any sense. I don't know why conservatives have this tendency, at least from what I've seen, Obviously, it might be different if I were to look up some statistics about the psychological effects of conservatism on people's ability to associate things. But in my conversations with, with conservatives, it tends to be these random-ass associations that come from nowhere. And think about it. With, the, um, with like all of the, the associations that we atheists get with Stalin and Mao, just automatically, you know, and Paul Pot... When there is no legitimate association to be made there, there's no reasonable link between the, the atheist ideology and what they did. It can be explained much better through so many other reasons before it even touches the realm of religion and spirituality. And if you actually study it and look into it, you realize that that was just a, that the atheism wasn't, they didn't embrace atheism because it seemed the most reasonable. They embraced it because it allowed them to have more power. At its core, yes, the communist philosophy did embrace atheism because it rejected religion as a means of controlling people. Because these statist communists, that were the Russians, in the, the Bolsheviks rather, uh, they wanted power. And so they wanted to strip power from the religions by getting rid of them and, and putting that power in their hands. That's what it was about. It was about a power struggle. And as with most religious things, it wasn't about actual religion. Like the Crusades, anyone who fucking thinks they're about religion hasn't actually studied them. They're all very, very political in nature. And they just use religion to convince people to actually do it. That's where religion is wrong. That's where religion is always fucked up. It, it makes an excellent tool for the brainwashing of the masses. And I know I've kind of diverted from my point here, uh, and I guess that's to be expected with unscripted videos, uh, and I'll talk about my second subject, which is the prayer day in Texas in another video. Uh, I don't really have a ton to say on it, though. Um, but the point is, I, I don't understand these associations that, that, that conservatives... And I know it's not solely conservatives. I'm not trying to paint that picture. I'm just saying, in my personal dealings, that's what I've come across. Um, and I guess a large point of me being on here is my desire to branch out and to be more public with my discussions and to try and find some people who disagree with me who are reasonable about it because I'm sick of finding people who disagree with me who are completely unreasonable fucktards. It just doesn't make any fucking sense.